What is up, heroes? It's Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtues Last Reward Blind. Finally got that right for the first time in a while. It's exciting. But, um, I am excited to get back into the game. In the last episode, there was a lot of shenanigans going on with the AB game, and trying to figure out who did what and why. And then, considering the new pairings and where everyone's gone off to, uh, we were we spent some time with Temyoji, who demonstrated his distrust of us, uh, using that spray and everything. And then Clover seems to really have kind of lost it and really isn't trusting anybody. However, she apparently knows who killed Alice, so we're going to try and figure out just what she noticed that we haven't yet. But anyways, Fai is saying, looks like, let's go see what he's up to. I think it's Dio that we spotted. What are you doing here, Dio? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Just go with the flow, you know? Seeing where life takes me. What a sarcastic response. You don't seem to have any interest in searching for Quark. Why would I? Do we even know he's really missing? Maybe the little Bach is just off having nap time somewhere. So I figure, let sleeping dogs lie, right? Or kids in this case, I guess. If we wake him up, he might realize he's got enough BP to blow this popsicle stand and ditch us. That happens, and it's all over. As much as I dislike Dio, I can't help but agree with his reasoning here. We'll be stuck in here for the rest of our lives, which probably won't be that long. Yeah, I mean, as soon as Quark is awake, well, all that stuff, as much as I care for Quark, there's a very real chance that it means the, the demise of everybody else playing the Nonary game, so... The rest of our lives... Yeah, did I stutter? Or did you just forget? Zero Jr. told us, remember? The number 9 door only opens once. Once that happens, it's all over. It'll close for good after 9 seconds, so if you're not careful, you could get stuck. Close for good, huh? I had to admit, I'd kind of forgotten that detail, but if Zero Jr. had been telling the truth, we wouldn't be able to get out until we died. Heck, even that might not be enough. Maybe they just leave our corpses there to rot. My stomach did a little flip. So, what are you guys here for? Did you bring Fai here so I can kill her? That's right, I totally forgot. They are obviously not on the uh, best of terms. What? What? Oh, really? You already forgot your little stunt earlier? We're darn lucky K chose ally. If he hadn't, you'd be hanging from that crane right now. There's a crane. I wonder if that'll play a role in something later on. Sounds like you're getting a little desperate. Word of advice, Dio. That's not a smart attitude to have here. All you'll do is make sure that whoever plays against you in the AV game won't pick ally. You talk as if I care. I already know I won't be up against you two. Why not? K and I are the yellow pair? You guys are the magenta pair, right? Two pairs can't go through the same chromatic door. Yeah, even, you know, completely disregarding what colors could show up. It's got a point. Simple enough for you? How do you know our colors? K told me. He was here a while ago. 
Interesting that K would almost covertly... Well, no, it wasn't covert. They all compared, that's right. Um, but K openly offered that information to Dio. Speaking of which... Tenmyoji and Clover were here too. Guess everybody misses my company. Or nobody thinks they can afford to let you off their watch. Anyway, that's how I know what everyone's colors are. Was K by himself? Yeah? What about Luna? Luna? Haven't seen her. Uh oh. I see. Anyway, K and I won't be pairing with you two. We'll be taking the blue solo. That's... that's Alice's bracelet. But... how did you know that? Oh, come on. Are you really that thick? Look at the doors in front of you. These are the next chromatic doors. So the next color is white? Bingo. See that thing next to the door there? Looks familiar, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, it does. I get it. You and K are both yellow. You can get yellow by adding red and green together. If you add blue to that, it becomes white. Exactly. You get magenta by adding red and blue together, and then adding green to that gives you white. So that means Fi and I would need to pair up with the green solo, which is Luna. Oh, we're, we're gonna be teaming up with Luna again? Did we? Were we with Luna for... I think we were with Luna for Gollum's Bay, weren't we? It was Luna and Alice, I think. Or was it not? Hmm. I don't remember. That means the other three would be in the same team as before. Temyoji, Clover, and Quark. Interesting. So normally I'd, I'd expect them all to get swapped up, right? So everybody's in a unique or a new setting for the upcoming puzzle. But in this one, six of the players were swapped, but three of them remain the same. Temyoji, Clover, and Quark. Huh. We know that Temyoji's a red solo and Clover is a cyan pair, so... The only one left is the other Cyan pair, so we can assume that's what Quark is. Could there be any other combinations? No. There's only one option this time. All we've got to do now is wait for these white doors to open. We've only got five minutes left before it's time to meet up with everybody else. We should get back to floor A. Yeah, not a bad plan. Sorry, but I'm gonna stay here. Moving around so much is a pain. Nobody invited you. <laughs> Come on, Fi. Right. On my way. Yeah, you can just see that all the relationships amongst all nine are just starting to deteriorate as time goes on, right? Dio's out on his own, Clover's out on her own, Temyoji's out on his own, Alice is dead. Quark is missing. K, Luna, Fi, and, you know, Sigma is really all that's left of any semblance of cooperation here, right? And I wouldn't be surprised if over the upcoming round, even that gets whittled away, right? Luna dies, or K betrays us somehow, right? And it's just us, just Sigma and Phi working together. So what are we going to find in the lounge here? You know when the music stops, things are about to get good. Unless it does that every time and I'm just unaware. <laughs> I think that is the case, actually. Huh? Something up? Why'd you just stop? Well... You see that clock over there, the one that looks like the sun? Yeah? It reminded me of something we saw earlier. What do you mean? Remember the graffiti on floor B? Do you remember what it said? Uh... It's like, Memento Mori, the lion ate the sun? If the ninth lion ate the sun. Memento Mori, right? Do you know what that means? 
And it's Latin for something like, be aware of death, or remember death. I think it's usually used to mean, we're all going to die someday, so don't forget about your own mortality. What about the other part? Out of curiosity, I think we've talked about this before. Okay, so we can't skip it, but if the ninth line ate the sun, I mean, yeah, it's kind of nonsense, but... Oh, I get it. That's what the clock made you think of, right? The sun in that sentence. Meaning, uh, the sun is where one of the hands points, and then the nine is the other one? Yeah. Did you notice anything strange about that graffiti? It's that they spelled ninth with the E, right? Apart from the fact that it made no sense? Not really. <laughs> Wrong answer. Maybe you're not the eagle eye I thought you were. I guess I have to do everything. Didn't we- didn't Sigma notice this in another timeline, though? I feel like Sigma did observe that E in a different timeline. Part of it was spelled wrong. Specifically, they spelled ninth wrong. It should be N-I-N-T-H, but the graffiti had N-I-N-E-T-H. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. They just put an extra E in there? Exactly. Is there any meaning to that? I mean, there's gotta be, of course. It's kind of a bonehead mistake. If it's a mistake, right? Do you think it was, like, a kid who wrote it? Maybe it wasn't a mistake at all. I'm not following. Maybe Zero put that E in there on purpose. But why? Maybe because he didn't have enough letters otherwise? Uh, what? Is it another anagram? There's no way I'm gonna <laughs> untangle whatever it's supposed to be. Leave that one to find her superpower abilities. Anyway, if Zero wrote that graffiti, then it's got to be significant. Remember death. If the ninth lion ate the sun. Hmm. Oh crap. Hey. It's already two minutes past time. Oh shoot. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. <laughs> I was like waiting for the game to progress. And I needed to click. We should get moving. Right. So off we go. So we're gonna meet up with everyone and see what they found. Do we think Quark is gonna be here? I'm doubtful. I, I bet he's still missing. And if he's still missing after so long, where could he have gone? It almost makes me think that Quark is intentionally hiding as opposed to have been having been abducted or something. Right? If Two Milkmen Go Comedy. Isn't it missing part of it? Maybe? I don't know. But I'm trying to think, if Quark maybe had some sort of a problem and then because he knew the ins and outs of this place, because he was zero or something like that, he could hide effectively from everybody else. But I'm on the same line of you know thought that uh, if zero were to murder <laughs> Quark, that could also be feasible, and Zero could have just hidden Quark in a way that nobody else, you know, aside from Zero, would know. So that it's not really the fact that Quark has been missing for so long isn't really a plus one for Quark actually being Zero or something like that. But anyway, Sigma's noticed something, huh? K and Luna aren't here. Ah, so rashina. Astute observation. What should we do? What do you mean, what should we do? All we can do is wait. I do agree with this, right? It's tough because you know something is wrong to some extent because both Kay and Luna are missing. And there's a very real chance that one of them is the murderer and just murdered the other. And so neither of them is going to be coming back for a long time, potentially, right? Um, but at the same time, we were two minutes late. It's also very reasonable that Kay and Luna could be running behind and be three minutes late. 
it's probably in our best interest to wait five, 10 minutes even, and then say, all right, we should try to split up and come back here at a specific time. And if, if we're not there at that time, then something is clearly wrong, right? We don't want to end up missing each other by accident. Yeah, guess you've got a point. She does. Hey, where are you going? I just want to check something really quick. Yeah, can we go check out that spot Alice was bent over by? Check what? Right? She was like kneeling on the ground. That's exactly where it is. The last time we saw Alice alive, she was right here. Remember? She was kneeling down, looking at something on the ground. Yeah. Was it... Is that maybe where she found the handkerchief? What do you think she was looking at? Huh? Oh, there's blood. Find something? Isn't this... Blood? Ah, aha! Uh -huh. Nice work there, Sigma. I don't need you to pat me on the back. It makes me feel stupid or something. I think that's the point. The truth hurts. <laughs> hmm. So, blood, huh? Oh my god. If I suddenly looked up at the ceiling. Oh, that's a good point. That's a really good point. There could be a bloody body hanging up on the ceiling, dripping down the blood. My first impression was, okay, who was attacked here? And then I was thinking about, you know, the like the spread of the blood, and could that indicate maybe where the body was? Um, could Alice have coughed up the blood here, right? Because we know that she was infected with this virus, and we don't really know much about it. Uh, so that could be something related to it. But Phi has the astute observation, or I guess uh, thought, that it could be coming up from, from way above. I followed her gaze and found myself looking up at a metal crane. It was the kind you might see in a shipyard, the sort that moves along a metal track and has a claw to grab and lift cargo containers. So what's the deal with the crane? I mean, if there's not a body immediately evident, then it could have been involved in transporting a body after it's, you know, um, after it was stabbed or whatever it may be, or it could have directly been used to kill somebody, right? What? Darn, gone again. Stop running around. Just tell me what you found. I noticed something. Oh yeah? And what, pray tell, was that? The same thing Clover and Alice noticed. That's... Uh, can, can you just tell me? Look at the number 6 AV room. The side that's facing the wall has blood on it. The side that's facing the wall has blood on it. Let's, I'm trying to take a think and, and notice it myself. The other thing is, if this cargo were moved after there were blood on it, right? Maybe that's what we're trying to unwind here, is where could the cargo thing have been prior that has blood on it? That it could have gotten the blood on it prior to being moved to its current location, right? Hmm. <laughs> What's the first thing you think of when you hear blood? Vampires? Yeah, this whole thing kind of sucks, right? <laughs> Come on! There's no time to be screwing around. I'm talking about this thing. Yeah, I mean, there's the handkerchief. The handkerchief Alice had. It is worth noting, we could probably take a look at the blood spatter and see, does it look like there was an attempt to wipe it up, right? Um, because if not, then whoever had the handkerchief probably was the same person who experienced that blood spatter. There's some blood on it that we assumed belonged to the old lady. Consider this for a moment. Let's say this thing was on the floor next to the rightmost AB room. 
このハンカチからにじみ出たものだと考えてみるんだ。We'll assume that the blood on the side facing the wall came from this handkerchief. するとどうなる Okay, then what? Alice was looking at the handkerchief. そうだな。Right. だとすると、その時アリスは何を思っただろう What do you think was going through her mind? Why is there a blood stained handkerchief there? Yeah, that sounds like what would go through my mind. Or something along those lines? And. Did this belong to the old woman? It must have. And. But if it did, then who put it here? Yeah, the, the, the inevitable question is why is it here, right? Or wait, maybe someone just dropped it. Or they could have thrown it here. And. Phi is just that many steps ahead. You want more? You're almost there. I think the other question is somebody could have dropped it there using the crane so that they didn't have to touch it themselves. Hmm. How long has this handkerchief been here? Something like that? Yes, exactly. So, how long do you think it was here? Well, I imagine it wasn't here from the start. Wait. When's the start? You know, when we started. When you and I escaped from the AB room through the hatch on the roof. The first thing we did after we got out and met everyone except for Clover and Kay was go look at the number 9 door. We spent a lot of time examining the AB rooms, too. Yeah, I know, we looked at this from this exact angle. I'm pretty sure there wasn't any handkerchief there then. There wasn't. Wait. <laughs> So the question is, who could have been here at what time to actually place it, right? Finally figured it out, huh? I guess part of my question is, um. I, I do not, I'm not, I can't say with confidence that I've figured it out or anything. But I'm trying to remember were the AB rooms always the same? Or. Because I, I think anybody could have gone into any of the rooms. Maybe the order of the cargo containers was actually changed. Um, game? What's going on? No way. Oh! Wait, so I, <laughs> I thought something was like glitching with my game. I wasn't paying attention, but just, I guess, vaguely. I think the impression they're giving is that there's an extra container or one went missing. No, wait, the AB room moved? Yeah? Was it that crane? Probably. They moved the rightmost one all the way to the left. So, what was in the leftmost AB room? Interesting. The the body of the old woman. So, presumably, the AB room on the far right is where the lady was murdered. Outside the AB room, such that her handkerchief was dropped and there's blood on the cargo container or whatever. And then that container was moved to the other side of all the containers to set suspicion on Kay and Clover, right? But then that revealed the handkerchief and the blood, which I guess the murderer didn't notice or couldn't nonchalantly、uh, get rid of in, in time. The body of the old woman. And who was trapped in there when the No Nerdy Game started? Well, it would have been the AB room on the right at first, so I don't actually remember who this was. Luna? 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 What? Luna? Oh my god, we're gonna, we're gonna find Kay dead. For the third time, Phi walked off without saying anything. So we still don't really know how it happened, per se, but at some point, at this point, we're suspicious Luna killed the old woman. And I, I can't really think of a way that it was done, right? But it had to have been bloody. And it had to have been done in a way that. 
there could have been blood on the cargo container on the far right. After having been moved, right? Like, it would have had to have been between the cracks of the two containers. So I'm not really sure... Unless... Unless the container was moved first, and then the blood and the handkerchief were dropped there, intentionally left behind to put suspicion on Kay and Clover. That's the only order of events that makes sense to me in terms of the, the blood spatter being present, right? Because if it were arranged as it was originally, right, and the murder happens anywhere on the outside of, or, or in the inside of the cargo containers, I don't see the blood spatter and the handkerchief ending up in the location it was found in, right? How do you get blood spatter up against a wall when, well, that wall is completely inaccessible. The only way I can think of blood even getting into that space is dripping from, like, the top of the roof or something like that. But clearly that didn't happen. And so the, the container had to have been moved first, then the murder took place, slash blood and handkerchief were put there, and then the body was placed in the AB room itself to frame Cain Clover. Wow. So that's what I'm leaning towards at the moment. But this is pretty mind-blowing. I, I will maintain, I've always kept that sliver in the back of my mind that Luna was way too nice to be as innocent as she appeared. But, wow. My body felt like lead, but I forced myself to follow her. What's going on in my head now is I'm trying to recall that conversation we had with her about the blue bird in the cage. Because it was a really important metaphor, I'm sure, for everything going on here. But I don't remember what the takeaway was. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go review that uh, episode on my own time. She stopped in front of the graffiti that began to milkmen. What do you think this is? Is that actually blood? Well, I thought it was just paint from the graffiti at first, but I'm guessing you don't think so. Yeah, in this context, maybe it's blood. Maybe it's blood, but if that's where the blood is from the murder, how did it get on that one container? All I can think of is that the container, whatever the lady was, like, the container just, like, smacked her into the wall and, and crushed her in an instant, and that's what caused the blood spatter. But I'm having a tough time imagining how that specific wall of the container would have hit her on that side of, well, the room. And the blood spatter would end up on that particular side of the wall, you know what I mean? Anyways, is that more of the old woman's blood? Seems like it. So Luna would have killed her here, then taken her to the rightmost AB room. After that, she would have moved the room with the body in it so that no one would suspect her. That would mean the first person to get out was Luna, not Alice. Huh. That would mean the first person to get out was Luna, not Alice. So she had to have done all this before we were even awake, really, right? Right? No. I don't think so. Because the whole point is we all saw Kay come out on the far left after we all were awake. So at that point, the far right container couldn't have been moved all the way to the left. So when did this take place? So what about that handkerchief? This thing? Here, look. You see this line? It's possible that line is from whatever the weapon was, which means this might have been wrapped around whatever was used to kill the old woman. Oh, you think? If so, it kind of looks like... I mean, I, I kind of see like a sword or, or something, but I'm not 100% on anything. 
So maybe Luna wrapped the weapon with this handkerchief. And then threw it between the rightmost room and the one next to it. Then, when the room was moved, it came out. But that had to have been when nobody else was here, right? But it also had to have been after we woke up and everything. So when could that have been? That means Alice picked up the weapon along, the along with the handkerchief. Seems pretty likely. Oh, so the weapon was with the handkerchief as well. This is all just speculation, understand? Yeah, I mean, we're obviously using the information we have at hand to try to figure out what happened, but it's not like it's the only possibility that could work, right? There's probably plenty of stuff that isn't coming to mind, um, but this is just what seems the most likely. It's important to gather more evidence before asserting it, but... But be given its likelihood and the potential risk of not treating this speculation seriously, it's really important that we play cautiously around Luna now. There are a whole lot of things we still don't know. Yeah, it's a mystery, all right. And then the next question is, why does this only happen in this timeline? Why is it that in the other timelines, Luna either doesn't have the weapon or doesn't find the woman or isn't able to kill the woman despite finding her right once we find out what the weapon is we can try to figure out where she might have gotten it and that would could explain why in other timelines she didn't she wasn't able to actually do the killing but if it took place when it did that's that's still what i'm curious about when did it actually take place because she had to have had access to the weapon at that time so that does further narrow things <laughs> For example, why would Luna leave the AB room, murder the old woman, and then carry the body back and hide it in the same room? I guess it's possible she just wanted to hide the body. And then the other question is, how does she know how to move the crane and everything? I don't think we've even interacted with the controls for the crane yet. But we still don't have any idea why she would have wanted to kill her in the first place. It's also worth noting that Zero Junior, Zero Junior seems to have let all this slide. He's supposed to be making sure the game goes according to plan, but... So far there have been two murders, and he hasn't done anything about either of them. Do you think that means Luna is Zero Senior? Even if she was, though, I'm not sure why she killed the old woman. It's possible that she was some kind of intruder who wasn't supposed to be here, but... But that's Dio, isn't it? If Luna Zero Senior, couldn't she have found a better place to hide the body? She'd have access to the entire facility. And then, of course, the next question is, what happened to Alice, right? Because we know from one of the other timelines, it was a suicide. But in this one, I would bet it was a murder, right? I would bet that Luna killed her, too. That's not all, either. Let's say Luna moved the AB room to divert suspicion away from herself. If that's the case, why did she leave the handkerchief and the weapon there? She had to have known they'd be discovered after she moved the room. Besides, when and how did she operate that crane? Luna was with us since we first got out of the AB rooms all the way till we found the old lady's body. You, me, and her went through the magenta door and investigated the lounge. Then we went down to floor B together, and came back to the warehouse. The only thing I can think of is maybe the controls for the crane aren't in the warehouse itself, and so she had access to it remotely from one of the rooms we were in elsewhere. If you were designing such a thing, it would give you a good alibi. But if she's not Zero's senior, she wouldn't have had the input in terms of you know designing it in such a way. And I don't think she would have known that those controls existed if she didn't put it that way. If they're so obtuse that, you know, the, the crane controls happen to be in the lounge when Luna investigated it, right? That, that doesn't make, that doesn't seem very reasonable to me. But by then the room must have been moved. Of course. Ha! Huh, why didn't I see that sooner? 
Luna has an alibi. She couldn't have moved the AB room. We're her alibi. Interesting. I have to admit, you've got a point. Wait, what? <laughs> Sigma's like, wait, fine, you're actually, you're giving me credit for something? Hmm. So then the next line of reasoning is, could Luna have done the murder and then thrown... So, so my thought process was, could somebody else have moved the box, moved the AB room for some reason? But then that doesn't explain why the body was in Luna's room, right? Because she would have had to have expected it to have been found at some point when she inevitably paired up with somebody else or, or something like that, right? So why would she hide the body in her own AB room if she didn't plan on moving the crate itself? And I can't come up with a good answer. The only thing I can think of is that she maybe intended to move it some other time, but but she couldn't have counted on being a solo twice in a row to be the only person to access that AB room. And the other thing is accessing the AB room is difficult uh, because it announces, right? Whenever somebody's accessed the AB room uh, to start an AB game in 45 minutes. So I don't think that's very feasible either. Hmm. So why would she have put the body in there? And then why would somebody else move the crane? I don't know. You didn't even put up a fight. You're going to make me repeat myself. I never said Luna was the killer. Still, I have a feeling Alice thought she was. Which would mean that Clover probably does too. Yeah, so it is at the end of the day speculation. And this is, you know, just a theory that we're exploring to see how plausible it is. But, and there are certain things that are lining up, but we haven't quite put all the pieces together. So we can't quite, you know, stick behind that conclusion yet either. Hmm. Oh, you mean that stuff she said about what she noticed? Right. So is Clover gonna go after Luna now? Maybe? I don't know. Hey, fine? Hmm? I'm starting to get a really bad feeling about this. It's been like 20 minutes. We were supposed to meet the others 20 minutes ago, but there's no one here. You're right. Yeah, that's, that's really concerning, actually. Sigma, Sigma K shows up? It's literally been like 20 minutes and now finally decided to show up, K? And more importantly, where's Clover? Where's Tenmyoji? Where's Luna, right? We have so many questions now because Clover presumably has a motive to do something horrible to Luna. Luna could be a murderer herself, and we still don't know where Quark is, and we still don't know who killed Alice. And finally, Kay shows up 20 minutes late. Something must have gone wrong. But of course, we're gonna find out what that thing was in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really like this one. Um, the story is definitely progressing in a way that's got my curiosity peaked, right? I love these trying to figure out like, oh, who is who is this person really? Is it just a facade that we've been getting to know over the past 28 hours of gameplay? It's unbelievable to think we've played so much of this game so far. But things are starting to fall into place. And this timeline has been so fruitful. I can't wait to see all the information we've learned in this timeline, how it's going to play into the other timelines, right? And I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. But... Until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.